Lots of people look outside themselves for answers. Maybe it's that we're conditioned by the way our schooling is set up. We have this idea that we look to authority, pay our dues, and graduate. You know, move up the ladder. Or maybe it comes from the idea that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So our animus tidbit is about finding your guru. Hey, it's Laura Giles with Pan Society. Thanks for sharing a little of your time with me today. If you like this video, please check out some of our others and subscribe so that you don't miss any. So, where do you find your animus guru? Is there an animus school? If you look at most indigenous animus cultures, you don't see that. You don't see rules or commandments, you know, do this, do that. You don't see a lot of titles and divisions between people. They're all just community members who have roles and serve the whole. So who's their guru? Who can be your guru? Well, in the animus world, you are your guru. You have help. Nature is your classroom. The wind can teach you about things like the value of being unseen, the intangibility of some aspects of life, communication with the unseen world, and things like that. The trees can teach us about the importance of being flexible deeply rooted, patient, and to shelter others. Death teaches us that everything ends and returns to the cycle um, of life and become reborn as something else. So nature is your classroom. Your life, your experiences are part of that and it's up to you to make sense of what you see. So when I come on here, when Sherry comes on here, or we have guests on the podcast, you can listen to our ideas and see if your observations confirm with what we think. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't, and if they don't, that's okay. Trust yourself. You're right where you need to be. Now, what if you don't believe that? What if you think that you have no idea what you're doing and don't trust yourself to figure things out? How can you be your own guru then? So I did a video a while back about asking great questions. That's really a huge key to expanding your wisdom. In order to ask great questions, you have to be curious, brave enough to speak your thoughts, and mindful. That's a key, mindfulness. And if you're not paying attention, you won't get enough data to formulate great questions. A busy mind generally doesn't see what's there. It sees what it thinks is there or sees the past, and that's a huge difference. Another thing that will help you to be a great guru for yourself is to have an elder to ask these questions to. And this is not the easiest thing to find. There are lots of older people around, but not all of them are elders. An elder is someone who has acquired life experience and wisdom. Lots of people get old without getting wise. So if you don't have a trusted elder, you can look to your animus community for help when you're stuck. And it's hard to connect to people or ask intimate or maybe sensitive questions if they're not on the same page. They may be willing to answer, but their answers about spirits or rituals or whatever, you know, may not be all that useful if they're not animist. They can't speak from an animist worldview. And if you don't have an animist community, you're welcome to join us on ours on Facebook. So it may seem like you're being thrown into the deep end and told to swim at first. Learning to trust yourself, your visions, your feelings, and be your own person is part of modern animism. And so is learning to be a part of the community. For every yin, there's a yang. It's about being everything and nothing. And there are a trillion ways to experience and express it, and I wish you lots of courage and laughter on your journey. Your learning is up to you, but you don't have to do it alone. We're here for you. So thanks for tuning in. Ciao.